Well, let's take you back to our main news this morning. Just under half of all the calls made to the police last year related to antisocial behaviour. And yet, as we've been hearing in the news this morning, a new report suggests that officers often don't see tackling it as real policing. Earlier on breakfast, the man who put that report together, Sir Dennis O'Connor, told us that a swift response from police could cut antisocial behaviour in half. Well, let's talk about this to the Association of Chief Police Officers in Worcester, their spokesman on antisocial behaviour, Simon Edens, and with us in the studio, Rob Garnham from the Association of Police Authorities. Uh, good morning, morning to you both. First of all, let's get ACPO's view. Good morning to you. Uh, has Sir Dennis got a point? He says the police have, in effect, been beating a retreat over the past 30 years. Well, good morning. The first thing I would like to say is that we welcome these reports the report that Sir Dennis has issued and the report that accompanies it that looks at the victim's experience and takes an academic approach to antisocial behaviour. I think one of the points the report makes is that antisocial behaviour itself is a broad term. It encompasses some things that are crime, some things that aren't crimes and some things that are disorder. We welcome the report because it helps us to improve our approach. We've been working hard over the last year to try to improve our approach to antisocial behaviour. Yeah. The report itself confirms that all forces have adopted antisocial behaviour as a priority. That's at a strategic level. At an operational level, we've invested heavily with the support from police authorities in neighbourhood policing. 3,600 teams across the country serving their communities, making a difference to people who need their help. OK, well, Simon, they're saying a lot of things are happening on the ground. But, Rob Garland, are the police targeting resources or being asked to target resources in the right areas? Because so many people writing into us today saying, call the police, nothing happened, loutish behaviour continuing night after night. I think we're seeing those concerns reflected in the report. But what police authorities are doing up and down the country, we, we represent the public in terms of holding chief constables to account. We're making sure that the policing plans that we set reflect the public priorities. That's done through local meetings between the public and the police. And then we take that to a more strategic level and make sure that chief constables are not just concentrating on some of the serious and organised crime, but are dealing with the community so, issues. So why then is the HM Inspector of Constabulary saying, and he said it on this programme, that loutishness and vandalism is becoming normalised and doesn't seem to be tackled? in the way that it should. I think there's, there's been a problem um, gr growing over the years about the different perceptions of behaviour. Some people will see that as perhaps normalised behaviour depending on where they're living and the situations, whether they're dealing with serious crime or not. Now it's an issue that's happening and I think that the powers police authorities sought from the last government and we were given just this year the powers to intervene when the public are not happy with the policing that they get, when they make complaints. Police authorities can now deal with those issues. We've been given the tools this year. And I think in response to the report, you'll find police authority chairmen up and down the country sitting with their chief constables and saying, how can, how can we, we handle this? Okay. Uh, Simon Edens, you were saying earlier that uh, over the past year, more forces are beginning to treat antisocial behaviour as a priority. If that's the case then, how come Sir Dennis is so critical of police procedures? Well, Sir Dennis's report actually contains some good news for the service. It does highlight the hard work that's been done and it highlights the prog progress we have made. And what it also confirms for us is that we're on the right track. Yeah. We're developing an approach to deal with antisocial yeah. behaviour. No, sorry, I'm, really, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because he also says, he's not exactly complimentary, he says the police have almost given up when it comes to antisocial behaviour in, in many areas. Well, again, I'll point to the fact that antisocial behaviour itself is a very broad catch-all term and in terms of the response that we're providing, the report does say that 83% of people are satisfied with the actions that police take when they deal with antisocial behaviour. So the report does contain some criticism and it also contains some stuff that is for us, complements what we're doing and helps us to develop an approach to antisocial behaviour that deals with the risk of harm, that doesn't deal with antisocial behaviour as a category in its own right, but deals with the harm that it presents to people, to ordinary people in our communities. You see, Rob, what you and Simon both seem to be saying is we are tackling antisocial behaviour on the streets. Yeah. What this report is suggesting is that 71% of people who have been surveyed for the report had called the police about antisocial behaviour more than once in the past year. It is a growing problem. There's a rise in happy slapping. You know, there are random street violence which is becoming acceptable. Yeah. You both seem to be saying we're on the case, but what we're hearing is 
the police aren't dealing with it? I think there's, there's greater decisions yet to be made. Um, let's have a look at how we tackled and started addressing race and hate crime. What we said is, if someone rings in with a perception that it is a race crime and a hate crime, let's deal, it, deal with it as such. I think we should be saying the same about ASB. If we're having repeated callers, and let's get the technology so we can identify repeated callers, repeated victims, if they're saying, this is ASB and it's affecting me, mm. we shouldn't be categorising it. Let's say it's ASB, we need to deal with it. We need to deal it with it with our partners. I'm not sure what you mean when you say we shouldn't be categorising it. Does that mean you don't deal with it? When, when no, the call I, comes in, I, do the police go out and deal with it? They, 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 they do, but I think wherever someone might say, this is a crime, this is a certain crime, we'll put it in this and we'll respond to it in this way. I think antisocial behaviour, well, does it need a response now? Does it need a response at another time? I think what we're saying is let's stop trying to pigeonhole it. It's like race crime. If people are affected by it, let's deal with it. And I think, I think it raises the question, the debate that we'll need to have on operational right. independence. Simon Eden, Sir Dennis's report says it's vital that low-level antisocial behaviour, low-level antisocial behaviour should be treated as a crime. You were talking about treating it as a priority. Why is it, if it was treated as a crime, if, and if antisocial behaviour is an offence, why isn't it dealt with more often and with, you know, with, with a firmer response? Well, I think what the report highlights is that we have to work better with partners. The public who were surveyed for this report, 90% of them saw the police as the first port of call. When the public were, uh, when that idea was developed with the focus groups that this report deals with, actually they could see that a more collective response, us working alongside our partners and local authorities, for example, produces a much more effective outcome for the people yeah, who are suffering antisocial behaviour. Yeah, my point was, I, I, antisocial behaviour is either an, uh, an offence against law and hence a crime, or it isn't. So it's either a criminal response or a priority. And if, it's, you know, if it is a crime, it should be dealt with, shouldn't it? Well, that's exactly the point I made earlier on, which is antisocial behaviour itself is such a broad category, sometimes the meaning gets obscured. Actually, what we're talking about here are events that present a risk of harm to people. We need to deal with the greatest harms. We need to prevent harm that's happening now. We need to reduce the risk of harm that could happen in the future. We need to keep people safe. That's the core purpose of policing. And we deal with a broad range of other risks, risks of harm from, from, from terrorism, from serious and organized crime, dealing with major crime. So policing is very complex. We have to deal with this issue properly, but we ha have to deal with it against that risk, the okay. risk of harm to the individual and to communities. Deputy Chief Constable Simon Eden, thanks very much. Thank, thank you. you. And, and thank Rob Garner too. Thanks, thank Rob. You. <laughs> Time is quarter past eight, still to come on the programme today. Brad